Finally, after many years of waiting, NASA has officially rolled out the Space Launch System and the Orion spacecraft to the launch pad for testing ahead of the Artemis II mission scheduled for February. So what happens next? Congress has now officially announced new funding for NASA, setting the stage for upcoming decisions and priorities. At the same time, leading experts are strongly opposing the proposed cancellation of the Mars Sample Return Program, warning of its scientific and strategic consequences. Let's break it all down in today's episode of Great SpaceX. After more than three years of anticipation, we have finally reached the moment when NASA's next-generation lunar exploration system, made up of the SLS and the Orion spacecraft, is moving toward the launch pad. The rollout of the fully stacked SLS and Orion vehicle to launch pad 39B represents the culmination of years of preparation, testing, and refinement. According to the schedule, the move was planned for 7 a.m. Eastern on November 17th, which conveniently coincided with early morning local conditions. This timing was ideal as it allowed for optimal lighting and visibility, giving engineers, media teams, and spaceflight enthusiasts the opportunity to capture clear and impressive views of this historic event. As planned, the massive launch vehicle, which had been fully stacked inside the VAB weeks earlier, began its slow journey aboard the iconic Crawler Transporter 2. This enormous tracked vehicle carried the SLS and Orion assembly along a carefully prepared route, stretching approximately 4 miles or 6.4 kilometers from the VAB to the LC 39B launch platform at NASA's KSC. The rollout took more than 8 hours to complete, moving at a deliberate and cautious pace. At first glance, the speed may seem exceptionally slow, however, there are very good reasons for this careful approach. The entire vehicle was transported in a vertical configuration, standing nearly 98 meters tall. This makes the SLS and Orion stack the tallest rocket system currently rolled out in a vertical orientation. While SpaceX's Starship is larger and taller overall, it is transported in sections that are significantly shorter than the fully assembled SLS. In addition to its height, the Artemis II launch vehicle is extraordinarily heavy, adding further complexity to the operation. Because of these factors, NASA places an overwhelming emphasis on safety during the rollout process. Any damage sustained during transport could jeopardize months or even years of work, especially for a mission that has already faced intense public scrutiny. Once the rollout was successfully completed, the focus shifted to the next phase of preparations. With the vehicle now at the pad, NASA has approximately three weeks to conduct a series of critical tests and final checkouts ahead of the earliest possible launch date. At present, the earliest launch opportunity for Artemis II is February 6th, giving the teams a limited but carefully planned window to verify that all systems are functioning as intended. The first major milestone during this period is the cryogenic fueling test. During this test, liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen will be loaded into the core stage of the SLS as well as into the upper stage. This process is essential for validating several key aspects of the vehicle's readiness. Engineers will closely monitor how the fuel tanks handle extremely cold propellants, assess the efficiency and timing of the fueling process, and most importantly, check for any signs of leaks. Hydrogen presents a unique challenge, as it is the smallest and lightest element in the universe. Its tiny molecular size makes it especially prone to escaping through microscopic gaps and seals, which means even minor imperfections can lead to leaks. Detecting and resolving these issues during ground testing is absolutely critical, as fuel leaks during launch operations could result in significant delays or even mission cancellations. If the cryogenic test is completed successfully and no major issues are identified, NASA will then proceed to the wet dress rehearsal. This rehearsal is one of the most important steps before launch. During a wet dress rehearsal, the rocket is fully fueled and the launch team performs nearly all the procedures that would take place on launch day. The countdown clock is run through each milestone, and the ground systems, flight software, and vehicle hardware are all exercised together in a realistic simulation. The key difference is that the engines are not ignited and the rocket does not lift off. Instead, the test is designed to validate the entire 
launch sequence under real conditions. For Artemis 2, the wet dress rehearsal is currently scheduled for February 2nd, just four days before the earliest launch date. The outcome of this test will play a decisive role in determining whether the mission can proceed on schedule. If everything goes smoothly, NASA will move directly into the final launch countdown. However, if engineers uncover any significant issues, the launch could be delayed. In some cases, the vehicle may even need to be rolled back to the VAB for repairs or modifications. This possibility cannot be dismissed, especially given the lessons learned from Artemis 1. During that mission's preparation, the wet dress rehearsal revealed a liquid hydrogen leak that proved difficult to resolve. As a result, NASA had to return the vehicle to the VAB multiple times for additional work. Combined with other technical challenges, these delays pushed the launch from its original timeline in early 2022 all the way to November 16th of that year. Fortunately, Artemis 2 has a relatively broad launch window, giving NASA some flexibility. The current schedule includes three main sets of launch opportunities. The first window includes February 6th, 7th, 8th, 10th, and the 11th. The second window opens in March, with opportunities on March 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, and the 11th. A third window is available in early April, covering April 1st, the 3rd, 4th, 5th, and the 6th. This means that February 6th represents the earliest possible launch date, not a fixed deadline. Whether the mission will actually lift off on that first date remains to be seen. From an emotional standpoint, many people are eager to see the launch happen as soon as possible. However, when it comes to human spaceflight, success matters far more than speed. The most important reason for this cautious approach is that Artemis 2 is a crewed mission. The safety of the astronauts aboard Orion must always be NASA's highest priority. Any unnecessary risk could have serious consequences, not only for the crew themselves, but also for public confidence in future space exploration efforts. In addition, Artemis 2 plays a critical role in the broader geopolitical and strategic context of lunar exploration. The mission represents a key step in the U.S.'s return to the moon at a time when competition from other nations, particularly China, is intensifying. Artemis 2 will be the first crewed mission to venture beyond low Earth orbit since the Apollo era, bringing humans closer to the moon than they have been in more than five decades. The data and experience gained from this flight will be essential for planting future crewed landings and establishing a sustained human presence on the lunar surface. For these reasons, patience is not just advisable, but necessary. While delays can be frustrating, the mission is now closer than ever, and each successful test brings NASA one step nearer to launch. As preparations continue, updates on test results and schedule changes will remain critical to watch. With that in mind, it is time to turn to another major development that directly affects the future of SLS, Orion, and the Artemis program as a whole. NASA's budget and recent decisions by Congress. In the early stages of the new presidential term, NASA faced a period of significant uncertainty. The proposed budget for fiscal year 2026 included a dramatic reduction in funding, amounting to a 24% cut compared to fiscal year 2025. The most severe impact was aimed at the agency's science programs, which were slated to receive nearly 47% less funding. It's important to note that presidential budget proposals do not become law automatically. Final authority over federal spending rests with Congress, which must debate, modify, and approve appropriation bills. In this case, both the Senate and the House of Representatives expressed clear disagreement with the scale of the proposed cuts. On the 15th of January, following negotiations and votes, the U.S. Senate passed a so-called minibus spending bill that allocates $24.4 billion to NASA for fiscal year of 2026. The House of Representatives had passed the same legislation the previous week, meaning the bill will now only require the president's signature to become law. While the legislation directly contradicts the deep cuts proposed earlier, many observers expect it to be signed. Under the original proposal, NASA's budget would have dropped to $18.8 billion, with science programs bearing the brunt of the reductions. Such an outcome would have severely weakened the agency at a critical moment, particularly as major exploration initiatives are scheduled for the latter half of this decade. The minibus spending bill passed with overwhelming bipartisan support, reflecting broad concern over proposed funding cuts. The House approved the measure 397 to 28, followed by 
by an 82 to 15 vote in the Senate. The legislation combines funding for commerce, justice, science, energy and water development, and interior and environmental programs. For NASA, the outcome is substantial. The bill largely rejects proposed cuts to the Science Mission Directorate. While the White House requested $3.9 billion for science in fiscal year 2026, the final allocation provides $7.25 billion, just 1% below 2025 levels. This funding preserves dozens of missions that have been at risk. Saved programs include the Da Vinci and Veritas Venus missions along with ongoing deep space efforts such as New Horizons, Juno, and Osiris Apex. There's also renewed optimism that major human human exploration systems, including SLS, Orion, the Mobile Launcher, and the Lunar Gateway, could extend beyond Artemis III, though their long-term future may hinge on the success of Artemis II. Not all programs survived. Mars Sample Return remains slated for cancellation due to cost growth and schedule delays, a decision that has drawn strong opposition from the scientific community. The joint NASA-ESA effort to return samples collected by the Perseverance rover was explicitly excluded from continuation in the legislation. The Mars Exploration Program Analysis Group sharply criticized the decision. Its chair, Victoria Hamilton, warned that scientists are closer than ever to determining whether ancient Mars supported life and that the perseverance samples could transform planetary science. She also cautioned that cancellation risks damaging U.S. leadership, particularly if another nation returns Martian samples first. The debate is complex. Returning the samples would yield insights impossible to achieve robotically, yet the current program architecture is costly and slow. At the same time, China is pressing ahead with Tianwen-3, aiming to launch in 2028 and return samples by 2031, intensive pressure on NASA. Rather than ending the effort outright, many now argue for restructuring Mars sample return. One proposal centers on leveraging SpaceX's Starship, which could sharply reduce costs, accelerate timelines, and return far larger quantities of material. If adopted, such an approach could preserve scientific leadership while adapting to fiscal and technical realities. Whether this path is chosen remains uncertain. What is clear is that the decisions made now will shape the future of NASA's exploration efforts for decades to come. In any case, folks, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.